John Handegard, the winner of this tournament back in 1991, is shopping for a shot on this pair of lanes. Yeah, he struggled in practice, and he struggled in the practice ball so far. He gets four when he comes over. Hit the pocket one time. Turn the lights on. The top players have a way of making those critical adjustments at the very last moment. And they have a way of rising to the occasion. I watched Earl Anthony do it so many times where he'd struggle in practice. They'd turn those lights on 2.30. Jim Long started game one with a three-bagger. Another huge break, and all Handegard can do is smile. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> that gets old in a, in a hurry, though, if you're the opponent, as we watch him cross to the left side again. The head pin hits the three. They all slide into the six and the ten. Uh, the Jersey squasher is squashing them. Jim Long had nine strikes in game number one. Seven of them were legit. Now he starts game number two with an interesting strike. More room on this shot. And the 10 pin falls. We might mention that we don't have our Brunswick Bowler track this evening because the ceiling here at the Showboat Bowling Center is just a little too high to accommodate it. I will say one thing about Jim Long. He has taken advantage of every break that he's gotten and capitalized by uh, putting an X behind it. Strung strikes together in game number one to shoot 255. Hand to guard with a little loft, trying to kick out the 10 pin. John Handyguard with a four-step delivery. Using using a ball here that it that's different than the one he may use last week's man, by the same manufacturer, but this one goes straighter than the one last week. Here we see him. John just behind the 12 foot line, which is right about in here, has his right foot in front of the left. Now he pushes and steps pretty much together. We see the timing here. The ball along the right side of the leg there. And as he reaches the point, the foot's on the ground. He's right at the peak of the backswing, ready to bend his right knee and go into the slide. At the foul line, perfect balance, perfect follow through. Look good for a 10 pin. Another nice shot on lane 51. So Handegard utilizing all of that skill and talent. Trying to put some pressure on Jim Long, who has basically gotten away with murder here in a game and a half. He thinks this TV is easy. Huh? Sure. Let's throw it down there and get a strike. No matter where you hit. Oh, it has a way of evening out, doesn't it, Dennis? He swung that one more, made a better shot, left the solid 4-9. He switches ball immediately. He's going to move right, try and get it to the left of the four pin, slide it into the nine, aiming at maybe a quarter of an inch at 60 feet. Not enough. Open frame for Jim Long, John Handegard. Starting to catch up by just sitting on the bench, and now it's a four-pin match. And Andy Guard's got the four pins, so just sitting there, he's taking the lead, and suddenly things like that can turn a match entirely around. Big difference between bowling Frankie May in the opening game and John Handegard in match number two. Well, Handegard's reputation out on this senior tour is just impeccable of how good he is. And Frankie's trying to start his reputation. Baby split now for oh. Jim Long and the 10 pin topple, so he got a nice break. Another break, I'll tell you. But you got to put it in the 1 3, Dan. He's lost that right now. Three, uh, let's see what we got. We're in the third or fourth frame. Fourth frame here, he missed it in the first frame and a little tight in the third frame and misses it again in the fourth frame. So it's just, he's not hitting the pocket like he was the first game. Well, without question, these lanes are changing on the fly. And if you've not yet been there, you perhaps don't realize how fast the adjustment need to be made. And a lot of times you think, well, it was me. I threw it a little slow. Rather than saying, no, they're breaking down. Move left. You know, find some oil. See, Handyguard's approaching is slightly different. He's going straighter on purpose right down the second arrow. More 
more speed for the handyman who's just trying to keep the ball in the fairway because he doesn't want to make any bogeys. Well, he's just going straight at it, Dan, not giving that ball any room. Boy, everybody's baseball card here is about the same. Six feet, 185. I told you he's older than I am. See, mm -hmm. 25 years of pro, six senior titles. Still trying to catch Tita. Semez with seven. Tita cashed this week, but did not make it to the top 24. Good shot. Oh, it leaves the 10 pin. John well, Handigard desperately wanted a strike there because he felt like he could really tighten the noose around Jimmy Long's neck. Well, he's a great match game player and, and veteran player in the championship round. He knows with the inexperience of Long, if he'd have got that one, he'd have moved out in front by a considerable amount. Puts more pressure on Jim Long. As it is now, it's what, 13 pins? If he makes the spare. Stuck a little bit. No trouble. It'll be interesting to see how Jim Long responds in talking to him before the championship round. I asked him about match play, and he said it wasn't his strength. He wasn't as good a match play bowler as he would have liked. See if he tries to pick up the speed or he moves deeper. Okay, he moved a little yeah, deeper. Yeah, I was just going to say, same thing. And he also uh, talked about match play and everything else in the championship round. Yeah, I have had a lot of thoughts about that. Uh, I'm usually not um, that good of a match game player, uh, and I never could figure that out. My whole idea is just to take my opponent out of the picture and just do the best I can, regardless of what he's doing. And uh, uh, so all I can say is I, I just have to play my own game and, and just try to shut him out. 